little stick for you. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then he told me, you know, how it came about. Oh, it played well. Very good. Very All right. Okay. Well, Mara, uh, you know, I think your name must get pronounced and mispronounced uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. How do you pronounce it? Moira. Moira. Mm -hmm. Moira. Yes. All right. Now I have to go around pronouncing <laughs> Moira. Moira. <laughs> yeah, it's a little difficult. <laughs> what is the origin of the name? Um, it's Gaelic, Irish. My parents were both born and raised in Ireland, so um, we all have a lot of Irish in us. And uh, the names are also very Irish, Deirdre, Michael, um, Moira, Peter, Noel. Uh, Colette is the only kind of outside one that's French. And then Tracy, which is very American. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a family of how many? Six kids. Six children. Yeah, four girls, two boys. Any other actors in the family? No. No, we have a musician, um, we have one in the Air Force Academy, we have a physical therapist, um, we have one in the Navy, and one who's going into singing, and uh, hopefully film directing. It all depends on, on what happens with uh, colleges. So, And which number child are you? Third oldest. Did you go to college? I did, yes. Marymount College in New York City. Studied theater and minored in communications. And what did you hope to do when you were in college? Um, uh, my plan was to go to Broadway because we all come from a musical background. My father is a musician and growing up we took all different types of instruments and uh, I sang. And I really got into doing the musicals in high school so I thought obvious transition would be to go into Broadway. Um, it was sort of a fluke that I ended up in film. That wasn't something that I had planned at all. It just sort of happened. And the door was open, and I figured, hey, why not? What was that film? Um, the first one I ever did was a film called The Boy Who Cried Bitch. Pretty drastic title. Um, it's a story about a, a true story about a young boy who, at the age of 12, um, he grew up in a, a single parent home, and his mother couldn't handle He was a hyperactive child, and she couldn't handle him. So she put him away in different institutions, which he kept getting kicked out of. Um, the last in institution he was kicked out of, they sent him home. And within a matter of being home two weeks, he shot his, and killed his mother. It's a very violent and sort of drastic story, but um, it was true, and, and in a sense, it sort of needed to be told. And in that one, I played a 12-year-old manic depressive in uh, one of the institutions, which at the time I was 22 years old. So. And so now here you are playing a woman, a college woman, mm -hmm. uh, sharing a house with all these men. Mm -hmm. Could you ever see yourself doing that? Well, absolutely. Most of my friends are, are guys. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because there's a lot of a tomboy in me. Um, but I could definitely see myself doing that. I don't think after four years that the gender matters anymore. Um, you sort of build a bond as roommates and accept all the nasty habits and the good habits that everyone has. As far as what this film is saying, has it had any impact on you and how you look at goals now? Um, I've sort of, I, I, I've sort of always knew not to put too much emphasis on the tangible goals in your life. That's something that I was taught growing up. And I actually had a discussion with my mother a long time ago about how it, it is very hard for young adults to to decide in four years what they want to do with their life. And it's not fair that that pressure be put on them to get it all together in a matter of four years. So I always believe that if you work as hard as you can and do your best, what is yours will eventually come to you. Um, setting goals is something that I find almost destructive in a way, because if you don't reach that goal, you tend to um, pick yourself apart and uh, dislike yourself because of what you considered a failure, where I would consider it maybe it's just not what's supposed to happen, you know. How do you deal with the rejection that all actors have to deal with? Um, some days it's good, other days it's not. Uh, usually I just like to go, well, whatever, on to the next, you know. Um, if it's something I really, really want, it hurts when you don't get it, but you have to, you know, be a grown-up about it and just go on. Do you ever get to the point where you think, oh, I'm going to get out of this acting business? 
Um, sometimes, yeah. I, eventually I would like to get married and have children, and when that happens, I don't want to be working and hopping around the globe. I, I would like to be home with my kids. But uh, that's some, somewhere in the future. Right now, I'm, I feel very grateful for what has happened for me and to me and where I'm at. So I'm just going to go with it as long as I can and, and see what I can get out of it. Working with Joe Pesci had to be a unique experience. Yeah. How yeah. did you find him? He was very down to earth, very uh, normal kind of guy. Very funny, too. He uh, was very open to us if we asked him questions about his own life. He was uh, uh, very obliged to talk to us about it. Um, he just kept everything sort of humming and buzzing and fun, you know, which I kind of like because it takes a lot of tension away from the actual work process. Did he talk about his struggle as an actor? A little bit, yeah, yeah. When we asked him the questions, you know, he wouldn't, I'd, uh, he wouldn't offer it unless we we did ask him. So um, I remember one night we were all sitting. He took us to Italian meal. He loves Italian food and. Of course, we got to eat the best Italian food with him, and uh, we were just all sitting around the table, all asking him different questions about how did you get started, where did you live, you know, um, were you ever married, did you have children, you know, the third degree in a sense. And that was actually the the uh, first time that we were out all together uh, as a as a group. So all in all, you'd say this was a good experience. Very good experience. Yes. Yes. Are you at the point in your career? where people now recognize you? Not that much, no. Uh, I find that on screen I look a lot different than I do in everyday life, and I need glasses, so I wear those usually day to day, and people just can't tell that it's me. Occasionally someone w will do a double take, and they'll be like, it is you, isn't it? And that is occasionally, and I don't mind that. I'm actually quite happy that um, I can still rem remain in my own day to day life anonymous and uh, maintain a sense of privacy. And that you don't have to have three bodyguards every time you exactly. go out. Exactly. <laughs> I never, ever want to get to that point, ever, ever. I find that so, um, for me, it would be unbearable. I, I, w I couldn't live my life like that at all, not at all. You told me you were moving back to New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. OK. All right, all right. This is such a huge hotel. Oh, do you find um, those big hotels? You just get lost. And what bothers me when I go to Las Vegas, I had been there a couple of times doing video conventions, mm -hmm. and I, I got really bothered by families going to Las Vegas for a vacation. Parents bringing their kids. It just, it's the wrong environment for that, you know? <laughs> really, really wrong. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, now that, okay. You told me you were moving back to New York? Correct. Why? Um, I've been in LA a year and a half, and I've had enough. It's too close to the business. I like to be further away from it. Um, I also feel like I'm on vacation every day. And if I am on vacation, it's great to feel that way. But when I want to be working and motivated and energized, it really isn't the place for me. I find more variety and stimulation in New York City, or someplace even like Chicago. Um, I like people watching. I like walking out on the street and just coming across some of the greatest variety of faces and, and people. It's really wonderful. It's more real to me, too. So it's not the earthquakes that are running No, actually, I find the earthquakes exciting, to tell you the truth. It's the one thing I do like about L.A., in a way, as long as they're not destructive and no one gets hurt, but that's almost impossible. But um, they, I don't mind those at all. It's really the atmosphere of L.A that gets to me. It's too slow and it's too laid back. And I'm too young to be too laid back. <laughs> so. I have enjoyed talking with you very much. Thank you. And congratulations on your performance in With Honors. I really enjoyed this young woman you play. Thank you very, very much. Very good portrayal. Thank you. Now, yeah, we just have to get a reaction shot. And, uh, and then you? All right, and I'm going to have to get some time to get back up to my room. Nothing's packed. I haven't even eaten lunch yet. No, actually, I would like to get it brought down. I'll eat what's in the room. You know, that's no problem. 
I, actually, I can't. I don't want to eat during the interview, so um, just leave it. I'll, I'll try and get up if, if I can get through quick enough. But I do, I need quite a, a, at least an hour to get ready to leave. Well, I don't even think the press conference is going to last a full hour. We can cut that short. Okay. I, see I wish someone had told us during lunch. I had no idea. I thought we were going to have a lot of time afterwards. Uh, I thought so, too. And when I called LA, they told me that they just were going over. Isn't that nice of them? Because we had a Go long lunch, way. so it would have been perfect, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you rolling, Pete? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'll just talk, and then you can just kind of nod. And okay. See, I am Irish, too. a uh, part Irish. I'm, Are you? I'm, I'm split down the middle, 50-50 French-Irish. Oh, wow. Well. And my husband, who is deceased, but my husband <laughs> Have you been to Ireland? Oh, many times. Oh. I used to live there, actually, when I was younger, for oh, three years. Where did, where did you live? I lived in Thraban, just outside of getting to know her. Um, maybe one day I will, and then I'll be able to maybe uh, give you an opinion of her, but I really... And then, uh, uh, so uh, what uh, is the period of that picture? It's contemporary, oh. yeah. yeah. And uh, who directed it? James Gray, first time director oh. from USC, yeah. Uh-huh. So 